precision microgravities, cosmic orchestration, symphonies of ionized winds. This is the spectacular that in captivated a little girl one hot July night, 1969. Just 10 minutes shy of my imagined world record in hide-and-go-seek, sequestered away, hidden high up in an oak tree, my 12-year-old mind contemplating whether or not I should take the risk and leap for the stars on that full moon night, or resign myself to the fact that it most likely wasn't destiny that had been calling my name for the last half hour, but more than likely my probably now thoroughly exasperated dad, in which case I momentarily considered taking my chances with destiny and uh, Leaping. I'd like to thank the individual in the audience who was kind enough to let me share the crutch, seeing how they actually did take the leap. Little did I know then that I had the right idea. These spectacular orchestrations, these cosmic microgravities. But I was about 20 years too early. Upon entering our cool family living room, my father immediately plopped me alongside the TV. Note I said alongside the TV, for as the youngest daughter, I was precisely the right height to best hold position on those always precariously propped antennas on top of the TV set, necessary in those days to gain even the grainiest of picture receptions. Missing my true calling as a contortionist, I proceeded to crane my neck around to view the TV screen while strategically dodging the pillows thrown by my brother, Steve, and my father, too, and was absolutely amazed, astounded by what I saw, which, by the way, wasn't that last pillow that nailed me square in the back of my head. A man was walking on the moon, mesmerized, I solemnly get dedicated the next two hours to racing back and forth between that cellophane TV screen and the, the full moon outside, yearning to just catch a glimpse of Neil Armstrong walking on the moon. Yet after a while, those images, my straining to see man walking on the moon, no longer seemed to quite absorb me. I wasn't so absorbed with trying to discern silhouette, but over time, I became more intrigued with what his view must be of me as he looked back from the moon. Suddenly, my dreams took wings, and I, too, wanted to boldly go, to share in that breathtaking view, to one day see my footprint on the moon. Yet for some of us, it was more than moon. For I also wanted my journey to divine and chart to the very detail the extraordinary path trek by something as exquisite as a tear shed in weightlessness. Space keeps us yearning to not only fathom and experience firsthand just how, for example, a tear falls in space, but to also decipher and glean how a rogue tear inexplicably defies explanation and reverses its luminescent flight to float, suspending bejeweled lashes in a ring of iridescent surface tensions. Of all the questions, interestingly enough, that I can be asked about space and its vastness, the one question by far that I am asked the most is why? Why? Why do I want to go to space? And in return, I always wonder why doesn't everyone want to go to space? The sky may have been the limit for the answers, but space, ah yes, space, was teeming with the questions. As my intrigue in space continued to grow over the years, driving me into studying biochemistry, subsequently practicing aerospace medicine, and logging countless 
aerobatic hours in a wide variety of high-performance jets, I began to find myself more and more, almost irresistibly, inverting that beveled lens on my fascination with the bits, atoms, neurons, and genes of the microscopic in order to recast it upon the backdrop of its overarching macroscopic shadow we call space. Yet, after a while, you know those, those jets? Well, they no longer seem to go quite fast enough, nor quite high enough. I knew then that the only way to go was up, and the only way to get there was to boldly go. My aspirations over the years have taken me on a fantastic voyage, one in which we could have never imagined that what we have learned along the way about our bits, atoms, neurons, and genes could have ever led to us waking up each morning poised on the verge of constantly emerging game-changing breakthroughs, breakthroughs that span well beyond our horizons far deep into space, breakthroughs that eventually <laughs> after years steeped in graduated cylinders and stethoscopes, eventually drew me away from the practice of medicine in order to aspire to explore the vacuum of space. Breakthroughs such as the Kepler mission, 2,300 planets and counting, each time a new planet blinks, the ultimate stare-down contest, the Elcross mission, tapping into liquefied water on the moon. Mars rovers, curiosity, precision landing at its finest with literally groundbreaking research and rocking images. And what can we say about the all-star, all-sky telescope? Actually tracking the latest meteorite right into my hometown, the Nevada meteorite, reassuring us that even if you can't get to space, space can still find a way to get to you. Yet, the breakthroughs that held particular fascination for me were those delving into the human body, unraveling the human genome, sequencing DNA, endowing us with the ability to not only identify and manage disease risks such as Parkinson's, but to also potentially design targeted interventions. Breakthroughs such as compression exercise, upregulating one's own natural growth hormone, and the stunning stem cell spitwick and even now skin cell discoveries, all positioned to biomimic and recruit the body's remarkable compensatory processes in order to enhance tissue function and restore human health. Breakthroughs such as Earth-based Mars simulations. Imagine four months sequestered away, just a stone's throw from volcanic slopes, testing energy-efficient habitats while carefully choreographing cooking recipes, strategies to overcome crew susceptibility to appetite fatigue during long-duration space missions. And when coupled with exercise, monitored by trekkie-sized, miniaturized tricorders, we can begin to enable mission readiness by optimizing for nutritional health of the brain, heart, muscle, bones, even the immune system. Now, just imagine unleashing the secrets that dwell within us by exposing our bodies to the incomparable but not incomprehensible vacuum of space. Bit theorems, atomic quantum mechanics, neuronal plasticity, gene sequencing, once unearthed and redeployed in the graded gravities of space, unveil for us a transformative capacity of not just the galaxy without, but our human constitution within to reinvent itself. 
And as we grow in our understanding of human performance in space, we can begin to better appreciate how to preserve, for example, the amazing resiliency of the brain's plasticity, or pulse the body's natural, intrinsic recovery pathways in order to restore the loss of redundant muscle mass and bone density prudently offloaded in microgravity. And as we grow to better understand and resolve how to sustain the human body in space, we can begin to apply the body's remarkable adaptive ability to influence and prevail over similar con disease conditions that we experience right here on Earth, such as neuromuscular and cardiovascular disease, osteoporosis, diabetes, and cancer. The human body is but one of countless examples of how we can look back through the lens of space in order to gain vital perspective on how to restore, even retool, our lives here on Earth. So when it comes to space, simply because there is nothing like space on Earth, simply for that chance to harness, inverting that lens on the human microscopic in order to overlay it on the macroscopic fabric of the cosmos serves as the irresistible why that insatiably compels me to lift limbs tenaciously tethered by gravity and take wing. This is why space, a consummate, unparalleled, hallowed hollow and high of unequivocal learning that jealously denies casual speculation and defies even the most refined designs at absolute speculation. We can't even begin to repl replicate what we see on high. And space tantalizes us to not only seek out but unleash fresh frontiers, be they Earth-based or beyond, thriving with novel perspectives on conventional answers. Because in space, it's not so easy to settle for an answer simply by walking away from the question. So the real question posed to us is not, should we boldly go, but are we bold enough to make space in our hearts for one another? Because possibly, just possibly, could the bits born of compassion math ultimately intermingle our atoms, neurons, and genes at the very heart of the human element and resonate space exploration with the humanity that could actually change the global conversation for the global good, that could transform international imperatives into international narratives. It implores us to extend the conversation beyond bits, atoms, neurons, and genes to encompass the human experience. And if not for the human experience, then why space? And in return, if our experience in space fails to refresh and resonate our respective bits, atoms, neurons, and genes to culminate in a greater good, then why boldly go? Admittedly, there are countless compelling reasons and endless possibilities for why we should continue to evolve and flex the muscle of robust technologies capable of enhancing our lives and sustaining the planet. But if we fail to refresh, if we dismiss refreshing our bits, atoms, neurons, and genes by stifling the nature of humans to inquire and explore, we serve only to stunt our reach into space and settling of 
new frontiers. Nature teaches us that a species devoid of diversifying is at risk of losing its persistence, becoming obsolete, and ultimately failing to thrive. I can only hope that our beloved Pluto, once lauded as a final frontier of our solar system, now sadly, alas, demoted and no longer recognized as planet, I can only hope that Pluto will not someday reciprocate in kind and abandon an Earth lapsed barren and absent of humanity. Consider, a child's thinking is unbounded and free to champion an underdog like Pluto. And isn't there a little bit of Pluto in all of us? Haven't we at some time in our lives been discounted, even dismissed? Wonderfully. We are all wondrously so much more than our bits, atoms, neurons, and genes. For when humans experience exponential frontiers for the first time, that is when energy states intermingle. Oh, my goodness. Inquisitiveness is celebrated. Inclusiveness is championed, and ultimately, compassion is unearthed. So Pluto is no longer our final frontier. Pluto is now the beginning, the gateway to 2,300 planets and counting. Pluto is back. So in closing, maybe, just maybe, if we thought more with the mind of a child and found space in our heart, made room in our hearts for one another, we might, just might, be able to unearth and dismantle those borders between us, champion the underdog, and uh, even unite nations and make a global, even a true galactic unit and a union that has space for all. Yet, when all is said and done, at the end of the day, should we as humanity flinch and fail to embrace exploring the innocence of wonder, I can only hope that that little girl who aspired to boldly go and only yearn to discern how a tear caught up and carried away in weightlessness floats, I can only hope that that little girl never grows up. Humanity unearthed. Thank you.